Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. Today I've got another Amazon unboxing and this one will be kind of fun. Um, but even more fun than that will be the, um, the videos of my experience with the tools that are in here. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, for the unboxing, what I'm going to be using are the Fisker um, garden shears, multi-purpose garden shears. Kind of a neat design. Uh, they've got a plastic full coverage drain hole on the back, um, full coverage sheath for the blade. Still gives you access, you know, for those emergencies when you've got to open a, a bottle or something. Um, this is a tape cutter. It's designed to slide across, but I found another feature on this that I like even better that might not have been even designed for the use I'm going to put it through. Um, and then this is a uh, sharpening um, uh, ceramic that's embedded into the sheath. So you would line these things up um, and slide through. It looks like it's uh, this way here. There we go. Um, and kind of like you're, you're cutting them. Um, sort of works. Might even work better just doing that. There's a, a bump here that gets kind of in the way. But anyway, um, as far as the shears go, what we're looking at uh, is kind of a standard scissor size. A few features. One is the blades come apart. And Fiskars does this deliberately for not only cleaning, um, but also because now I have a knife. So uh, scissors are kind of opposing knives on a pivot. That's the what they're all about. So why not have your scissors come apart and now I've got a functional knife um, that will allow me to, to do knife kind of stuff without the scissors being in the way. Um, has a cord cutter down here. Kind of a nice little thing. A nice little addition there. Um, it has a wire type cutter. Let me see if I can get this thing back on here. Whoops, there it is. A wire cutter right here, so you can snip um, wire just like you could with a pair of pliers. Uh, this is kind of a cord or rope catch. So sometimes when you're trying to cut rope, um, multi-fibered rope, it just kind of um, smears out and then you end up cutting it at an angle. So that actually tries to uh, hold it in place. Um, and then, the, uh, what am I doing here? There we go. And then um, up here, they call this an awl, um, kind of like on a Swiss Army knife, you know, it's got a little hook. But what I found is that is absolutely tremendous for opening boxes, just slicing it. And I'll show you that rather than the way a lot of people do it, which you can't do it as easy with this because it comes apart. And that's crack open your scissors and then slice down with one blade. Um, so this actually allows you um, to keep the scissors closed um, and to go ahead and, and uh, slice through tape and things like that. Or you can use it on the sheath. That works. Um, and then one other thing on this is this is a screw here, a little Phillips screw. And you can hear there's a little bit of noise, so it's adjustable so you can keep the proper amount of tension. Um, and I've had some field shears that after a while they just loosen up and because this was a fixed rivet mechanism, you just couldn't make the um, scissors work quite as well. So you can see they're really loose here. Um, you can see it actually under weight swings, but it gets to a point like right in here where it's pretty solid. And that's because there's a probably a taper somewhere that's causing the blades, the cutting knives as they approach each other um, to gain some uh, stress to make a better cut. Um, I think this has got some kind of a, like a titanium nitride coating um, for durability. Um, and a ribbed area here. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be jimping for use as a knife um, or something like that, or if you could use it as, as some uh, rough grinding of some sort, but I don't know what would be on the back of the scissors, especially inside that triangle. But anyway, you're probably wanting to see what's in here, so let's get to it. Uh, so anyway, using this all, I can just drag down, cuts like a dream, just slices through, it's a little crude, um, but then so is grabbing your scissors and trying to cut through, try the knife there, um, trying to cut through the tape, etc. So what do we got? It's exciting, huh? We have got 
more bubbles. Two things. And I will start with this one. This is uh, Klein's newer USB um, digital meter, and this is designed for both um, USB-C and the standard um, USB-A, the traditional square one, and it's got full pass-through, so I can actually do C to B or C to A, I hope. Um, no batteries, obviously, because this particular thing is um, powered by the USB. Let's crack it open here, see if my garden shears actually work. Um, nice. Of course, I like my Milwaukee's, but I uh, enjoy playing with tools, which is the whole point of this. So what do we have here? We have got the... Whoops. Pop these out. There it is. Um, and for size reference, this is the uh, one that I did a previous um, video on, the smaller standard USB with the pass-through. This is kind of double. In fact, I wonder, that'll kind of be fun. I could daisy chain these and, hey, I could power itself. Yeah, I guess that doesn't work. Anyway, um, I'm excited to uh, be able to do some testing and, and learn more about the USB-C system because it's a voltage regulated system um, and that's the whole idea of the USB-C is any connector can be used with any device as long as they're all appropriately following the USB-C protocols which means if you've got like a MacBook and it's got a big charger on it that's USB-C plugging into your computer you could also use that to charge your phone even though it's a you know 60 watts or whatever that thing is um, 40 watts and it will scale appropriately for the maximum efficiency of the device. So, it, so things are charging faster and you're probably not going to blow things up or start them on fire. Um, so that's why we do USB-C. Basically the chip inside, wherever it is, it's, it's often in the... Um, there's a regulator in the housing, but you also can get um, cheap stuff, so be careful, like on Amazon that doesn't have the regulation. And those might either run slow or they could literally damage something because they're not following the protocol. So just because it has the shape doesn't mean it's perfect. So you wanna make sure that you've got your industry standard um, designations on things. Um, anyway, so I'm going to uh, dig in and learn about this guy and start using it. Um, and now the fun one, finally you're asking, wow, what took me so long to get this? This is the Klein um, Rechargeable Thermal Imager. And this particular thing is, is very similar um, to the Klein Bluetooth speaker in format and size. Um, I'll crack, I'll bust it out of here in a sec, but maybe I'll hurry and bust it out so we can compare. I don't want to cut through any cables. Let's see. Is that going to do it? Look at that. There we go. And what else is in here? We've got a case, paperwork. Cord, instructions. Anyway, what this does is it's a thermal imaging camera that actually provides a false color um, rendition of the um, uh, area it's pointed towards um, as far as the um, emitted infrared radiation. Short press menu, long press back, on button. It's at the top, I guess. There's a photographic uh, capability here. It'll take pictures and then drop those pictures into a um, micro USB card that is inserted in here, charge it. Um, this is still using the old um, micro USB instead of USB-C, which is too bad. But um, I guess they're both still working. Let me turn it on here. There it is, it's booting up. And what do we see? we see anything? What is that? Calibrate. 
there we go so like there's my hand let me try to line that up without the reflection here um, so you can see the palms a lot warmer um, I'll be playing around with this trying out some different things um, now I did have a thermal imaging camera before um, one of the flares or flare um, that actually attached to the bottom of an iPhone um, and this one used the onboard software processing software of the iPhone and I also used an app um, designed by the Vernier Technologies company to run uh, some extra features that are possible with the flare camera but this one it's USB rechargeable but the battery in here just doesn't last very long and it wasn't powered by the phone which was unfortunate so I was looking for something with more horsepower um, and then I'll uh, play around with with all of the features on this thing to try to figure out you know how best to use um, use its limited capabilities since you, you can't um, attach it to a computer and then use um, software to to manage what you're seeing uh, came with half a charge of battery um, but anyway i'm looking forward to using this thing um, and it's a kind of amazing this was 250 bucks so it's kind of amazing that you can get some quality uh thermal imaging um, at that at that price i kind of wish there was a tripod adapter on it i don't see one but i also figure it'll easily snap into an iphone type um, holder that goes on a tripod um, loads of fun and I've used uh, the thermal imaging at night uh, it's pretty amazing what you can see and what you can see through thermal imaging is like go-to necessary on uh, uh, fire trucks these days because it'll actually look through smoke um, and then around here we got tons of wild animals running around at night and I can literally just pointed in different directions and see the outlines of deer etc um, but anyway there's my uh, Amazon unboxing so I got a lot of fun ahead of me with that doc out